<clears throat> Welcome, everybody. To another lovely, uh, real conversation here at Wellbeings. So any of you are tuning in, it would be great if you hit the like button or share or subscribe because it really helps us. We have a very amazing person here today to take us on a journey. And I'd love to introduce um, Lisanne Lin. And she is a mindfulness teacher. She's, she works at an international school. Uh, she's been, uh, what can you say? She's been in performing arts and acting and uh, modeling since she was a child. She's also a private yoga teacher. Today, she's going to start speaking about the things that women don't speak enough about, which is body image issues. She's also going to touch in on having an eating disorder and the journey she's been on to get to know herself, to deal with the ups and downs of life and the breakthroughs. So really, just before I, we get into this, I really wanted this presence that this is a huge, huge issue in the world. And whether it's disordered eating, um, whether it's uh, body image issues, whether it's having an eating disorder, whether it's uh, like anorexia, bulimia, or bigorexia. This is a huge issue that's not isolated to one part of the world. Uh, it's all sectors of the world. And I'm not a specialist in the area, but I do have clients who come to me who struggle with um, body dysmorphia and a bigorexia and some eating disorders. So I have a, a little bit of experience in the industry. But it's a, a really important um, subject to start to bridge because there's such an avoidance of deeper feelings and emotions and pain. And there's this huge sort of taboo where people don't talk about it. And it's accentuated and glamorized and also media and image and and trying to get that next perfect picture so it's a real hot potato and i really just want to take a moment to really extend if i could uh, a handshake and a hug here to, to a very brave woman who's coming in to start talk about something really important so thank you for coming today handshake <laughs> yes you're welcome yeah yeah i'm very happy to to be on um, well beings. I mean, I'm so glad to to see that you know you're um, bringing together so many of these um, talented, beautiful, and um, amazing people who are working on themselves deeply. You know, I mean, I know some of them as well because I've met them in person in Ubud as well. You know, that's where I met you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, mm. it's this is a great place of. Uh, uh, it's a good wellness in this uh, wellness location, so we get to uh, be very privileged with meeting some great souls uh, coming through here. So um, I'm really curious about where would you like to start to tell us about mm, the journey yeah. you've been on? Where did you start? To, how did you start this journey of of you know understanding there was there was issues? Or, you know, or maybe you know like. like Tell me a little bit about your, your past, your childhood. What happened? What didn't happen? Um, what? Maybe we can start with um, eating disorders. So for me, my eating disorder started when I was uh, 14 to 15. Yeah. So I think that's the age when, you know, most of us, our bodies start changing. You know, men, you know, we start, like, men and women both start having, like, pubic hair. And then women start having hips and breasts. And, you know, men start having voice change. And then, you know, so all of us having those bodily changes and then um, together with finding our identity. So I think at that time, you know, some, some people did comment that, oh, you know, you're, you're getting chubbier. You know, you're getting more plump. So for me, having been always a very thin child, you know, I always, um, you know, society always associates thin with beautiful, thin with um, healthy and better. So I was like, oh, no, I'm getting fat. So I, I did, you know, um, I immediately was like, okay, you know what? Oh, that's my cat. Here, here, here. 
So I, I immediately was like, okay, I have to cut down on all um, so-called the unhealthy uh, things in my diet. I have to now exercise um, as much as I can excessively, you know, to, to no longer be fat immediately. So that became too obsessive, you know, a, a dangerous obsession. Yeah, rather than something that was did with love and, and, and balance and healthy. It became something like a punishment and addiction. Yeah, and then I, I and then you know the, the 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 thinner you became, then you know I I was not satisfied. I had to be thinner, and then even when the scales moved back up, then it's like oh no, I'm becoming fat. So it just became this really um, insane, unbearable, uh, toxic relationship with yourself. Yeah, and it's it's further and en enhanced, and unfortunately by you know the advertising industry and by by um, society or, or by friends and family around you who think like oh wow now you're looking better you're looking great or like oh no now you're looking thinner not good so you, you keep having these mixed messages around you while you are um, wallowing in your addiction and it is an addiction just like any other drug um, alcohol um, or compulsion like shopping gaming gambling kind of addiction it, it, behavioral wise yeah yeah i what I see in the clinic is this sort of really isolated uh, and uh, you know sort of experience for people who struggle with e either eating disorders or or dysregulated eating or like sort of anything in that genre. It feels like there's a hyper focus on intellectual understanding about diet as a way to keep you away from the body and away from the emotions, you know, and, and it feels like these earlier sort of um, uh, haunting voices of, hey, you're chubby, or, you know, which is really translated as, I'm not good enough, I'm not good mm -hmm. enough, I need to be better. And, and just the pain of that just is building. And what I find was that the separation from the pain was the intellectualization and the sort of the real focus of continual thinking about food or how to cut it, how to do it, looking at skills. And so again, this is, this is something which maybe some of our viewers feel it's normal. And mm. so I would love for you to let us know, like what was a very low point at that time for you in that, in that, in that vicious um, um, circling uh, sort of uh, habit. I think there were many times that, you know, because you were very deprived of nutrients, like, you know, I started to always like starve or like, you know, I started to become really like, hungry because your body is very deprived and you start to lose control around food. You start to binge eat. Um, and, um, you know, even when it's raining, I went swimming. Even when my ankle was hurt, I still continued running. And then I, there was once I perched so hard, then I broke my tailbone. Yeah, it's still broken. Yeah, and then there, were, there was once... Um, when I was on holiday on vacation, I actually slept for like 20 hours. I think I was alone on the trip for the last day. Yeah, that was how tired and broken my body was, you know, from all that, the, the binge um, and purge cycle, the, the self-induced vomiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of shame, you know. There's a lot of um, um, self-disgust and judgment. Yeah coming from yourself that affects yourself negatively in a, in a holistic way, body, mind, and spirit. It breaks you. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's, that's so true. And I, I'm curious about you, those early jobs that you were in, in the acting or modeling industry. And, and within those, was there hints or uh, explicit, illicit, like sort of suggestions that you stay a certain weight? Or well, like, how how did that add to the struggle for you? I think um, um, to to already be accepted into these jobs, there's already like this look, you know, that people um, are going for before you know you 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 kind of um, before they choose you, you know, to to be a model. And so, because you are chosen, you know, you feel that stress and that pressure to remain in this certain weight. Yeah, so it's like, oh, what if I, I can't fit into these clothes? What if um, I, I look bad when, when I fit into these clothes? And then it's very normal, I mean, amongst 
like us models, actors, you know, to always um, go for plastic surgery, you know, to, to always be going on the next diet and weight loss. It's just really, really common. Yeah, for us to, to just keep doing these like procedures like liposuction, breast augmentation, um, nose jobs, um, eyelid surgery, going for injectables all the time. It's very, very like common for us to do that. How does it yeah. feel? <laughs> like, how does it um, feel? To well, story. it's yeah. kind of like part of the job and industry, if you ask me about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an open secret. Secret yeah. because, you know, maybe the viewers don't know, but amongst like, I mean, industry is like, okay, because you expect it to look good. So you're just going to do whatever it takes to maintain your looks. Yeah, even though it's not, it's beyond like nature or yeah i mean from a young age i think um it's already it's, it's already the message sent to like everyone you know men and women that it's like oh okay you, you need to um always go to the gym right Th these images and and these these um um messages around uh, around us are always like yeah being this way having these um certain criteria would lead to certain more positive outcomes for you yeah so you have to achieve them yeah to to, to have to have better chance for yourself yeah and i really imagine that if there's not a strong sense of self then mm. one get lost in that and that uh merry-go-round you know of having to like i am loved for how i look versus i'm loved because who i am and, and that cultivation of a strong sense of self, I feel is or like uh, a lot of support can sometimes be really helpful when you're in that industry, especially when you're young, because it yes, can yeah. take you. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing that, unfortunately, you know, most of us don't grow up in supportive families or have that self-love. So we go out to the world to try to find that love, you know, whether it's through our career, whether it's um, earning more money, um, having looks, uh, having people's attention from others. Yeah, so we try to gain all of that. We, we try to gain things through the world to fill our hearts, our empty hearts. Our, but but it's, it's just an, a never-ending um, cycle. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, for what we, I, I see in the, in the clinic here, it's just uh, the... the and from my own journey, it's like it's mm. a continual, it's a continual work to just keep trying to find a way back to ourselves again, back to our feelings, back to our heart, back to you know noticing how we see the world and as we mature, you know, as we just remodify and who we are as we grow, or or to want to grow more. But I'm I'm still very drawn by something that, that really caught my attention uh, as you mm -hmm. were sharing, Maria, and it's just about. What has to happen or what happened for you where you realized that you needed to reach out for help? Mm. Well, I think for me, it is just how damaging um, this chase and this vicious cycle is in terms of like the, the eating disordered thoughts and behaviors. Like for me, I think my behaviors are rather under control not 100 percent for sure maybe 80 90 percent which is extremely good compared to you know me like binge purging five times in a day or like you know not like like just doing crazy diets and and, and things yeah um but I, I think what's difficult is the mentality towards um um food and it, it's just it's just an addiction at the core of it just like any other substance or any other compulsion, it is a behavioral addiction. Yeah. Because of the lack of love towards oneself. Yeah. yeah. Because of a of a of an a hatred towards oneself. You know, we are taught from young, you know, that oh, this is not right about you. Uh, yeah. And, and and that's how, you know, the photographers, that's how the the, the agents that, that's what they what, what they do they, they tell you what's wrong about you 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 and and that and, and not just that it starts from a young age you know from a young age our parents our caregivers they, they start telling you okay this 
you, you know, on this test, this is bad, this is bad, you will work on this, okay, this is wrong about you, so, you know, you start feeling like this hole in your heart, you know, yeah, and then you want to fill it up with certain things. Unfortunately, you know, that, that can be th those unhealthy things like drinking, smoking, very common. I, I mean, all these are, are things that people here or ev everywhere do every day, you know, when it's an addiction, but it's just something done every day. Yeah, um, I remind, it reminds me of a client uh, I, I work with and she, she was um, telling me about this part of her um, mind that was like uh, a tyrant, always um, assessing, evaluating, um, criticizing, you know, really haunting her around her mm. future or what she saw in the mirror. So this sort of continual voice that, that, that I'm sure got developed through family, society, and in the industry, and then it starts to, you know, roll inside ourselves. I'm curious about, you know, how is that voice, how is that voice able to become more, in, to your experience, to become more mm. loving, more kind, mm. like process? Because really we're talking about, you know, you talked about, you know, like a lack of love for the self. Uh, like what was it that started to uh, change that voice a little bit in your mind? Well, I think for me, it's having gone through so much struggle and pain from that critical voice, um, you know, that, that critical voice doesn't lead you anywhere. I mean, that, that hate, that depression, yeah, it, it just le has led me to despair, has led me to, to dark, dark holes and, and um, dead ends. So I, I've, I've learned that it's, it's um, wiser to bring myself gently um, and to take my time step by step. Yeah. You know, um, back to a more loving, um, kind, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's really like a garden, like the mind, you have to tend to it. You have to like prune and pick apart and, and, to, like, and to like be curious about, you know, what's going on. Like really treat yourself like a, like a child. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think teaching at the preschool is kind of um, a little bit healing for me. Like, uh, like um, as I teach the children, it's kind of, um, um, how do I say? Like also appeasing my inner child in some sense, yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can imagine it's like, you know, I, as I experience it sometimes with my daughter. Mm, um, yes, yeah. Where you can really get in touch with the childhood or the childlike exuberance, the aliveness of uh, I call it like effervescentness, you know, where you're in that in that zone and it's it's very healing for the wound it's very healing mm. for to be able to allow your inner child to play to to cry to 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 you know to be supported to be held uh yeah. so I, I love that and, and i can i'm seeing you amongst all these children and i can see how that can be very helpful you know support yeah so i feel and, like as we become adults we kind of lose that um forgiveness towards ourselves and then we become really harsh we have that very harsh voice and yeah i think it's important to still treat ourselves um kindly and to to uh look at ourselves um as a child who, who sometimes makes mistakes and to kind of lead ourselves back to um the, our core and and yeah you know, yeah. to try to try to not be uh, back to that pure, pure self where we are not, you know, kind of tainted or like where, where all those different voices are are um, tugging us at, at, in different directions and yeah, like be centered. So like, yoga has really helped me as well, you know, with my body image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us some more about how, is it, uh, is it uh, sort of focus and structure of yoga? Is it... Uh... Is it the, the mindfulness aspect as well? If you like, mm -hmm. what is 
that helped you kind of get studied with uh, with that supportive uh, technique? Yeah, I think what um, struck me um, for yoga at first is definitely that uh, mindfulness aspect. You know, it's it's different from all the other like exercises I've tried. Like yoga is, is not just, you know, any other workout. It's really like a moving meditation, which is, which um, has, te- has taught me a lot about compassion. And it's also very beautiful at the same time, you know, like all these different poses, they are like, well, with like animal names or like warrior and like, like, uh, like, like there's always like the yin and a yang to it. It's very philosophical in its flow, yeah. There's just um, um, a lot to learn from it, just beyond the, the physical postures. The, there's like philosophy, conceptual. Uh, the breathing is also really, has helped me a lot with the, the mental health, especially with like um, calming the nervous system. Yeah. And also the focus, like the gaze. Yeah. So sometimes our minds are very busy and then like, you know, the balancing postures help with, and also where to look in each pose. Yeah, I think that's, that's very good. It, it, it gives me a sense of direction and also a um, sense of groundedness at the same time. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we had a, an amazing speaker uh, last week, uh, Linda, mm. and she was talking about her mm. journey um, where she was in yoga and uh, meditation that really helped her find particular facets that really helped her work through her trauma. And I think it's different for everybody. You know, like we, we, we journey in the world and if we're open enough, we're receptive enough, we can find uh, different things that can come together that can support the healing. You know, it's it's often not just one thing. And so through this journey of uh, having yoga and the mindfulness part, the, the, the focus part, the directional part, um, what was it that was starting to also, like, how did you get support? How did it start for you where... I'm, you know, where you were not just trying to do it by yourself anymore. I, what, what were those steps to be able to get uh, someone else involved, maybe? Mm, I think for me, I'm a, I've always been a rather independent girl since I was um, I was young because I I always stayed uh, only with my grandparents on the weekdays. Then weekends, I'll stay with my parents. Yeah, but it's just my person that personality as well yeah you know I, I love traveling solo and that's how you know I met you and and I, I, I that's how I meet a lot of people as well on my journeys um well oh uh it was about three years ago so it was my ex-boyfriend and then his mom has bipolar disorder as well so he also saw the signs in me so he um he encouraged me to seek help like to see therapists and uh, like professional therapists therapy and medication so I was like okay okay you know what I'll just um yeah I'll do it (laughs) so yeah I did and um since I've been uh um seeing a therapist one-on-one and then then you know like before there was uh the pandemic there were like group therapy sessions which were also very helpful which you also offer so I find that that's that's very important to also you you feel much less isolated um knowing that there are also other people who are, are in your shoes and wh- whom you can connect with, you know? Yeah, I think that's extremely uh, valuable. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like it's so important. And, and, and again, just it's so important to share, talk, but then it's so important to find spaces and places where people understand what you're going through. It's so yes. important to have... Um, I see it all the time. It's then when someone can speak to something that they're going through in a way that you haven't formulated it yet, but you totally get it. And it helps you formulate what's not fully formed yet. So whether Mm. it's an emotion, a a sort of struggle, and it's sometimes when someone goes there, they give us permission to go there too. And there's just something lovely about that supportive accompaniment. And wow, I, I didn't know you had, had been in, in some group therapy experiences. That must have been because a few moments ago you talked about independence as a character trait. And mm. uh, unfortunately, also when we have trauma, it's a trauma response sometimes to be super independent and not yes. need anything. So I'm exactly, so yeah. Mm. You were able to step in. Like I'm, I'm kind of curious how it was 
moments before you stepped into that group like what I'm sure the heart might have been uh, beating a little bit quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, you know what? Um, maybe I can just um, what's the word? Like a uh, um, back out at the last minute. Um, yeah, yeah, things like that. Mm. So I actually, I think I went for about one year consistently. For wow. the there were two that I went for. So there was Overeaters Anonymous, and then there was a Depression Bipolar Support Alliance, and then I also went for like one session of a psychodrama before which was pretty interesting so I think they are also running courses again which I think is great because I, I, I also have like a theatre and acting background so I think that um, form of like group therapy would it rather appeals to me and I think it's very useful Yeah, uh, psychodrama yeah. psychodrama is very interesting and again yeah. if we uh, listened to the podcast last week that's uh, Dr. Bessel who uh, was mm. one of those teachers, uh, an, an expert in, in, in those sorts of family systems and uh, sort of psychodramas. So it's a, mm. it's a uh, I think it's called uh, When the Body Keeps the Score. Oh, yes, I read that whole book. I bought it. <laughs> and then I, I, yeah, actually, I was hospitalized like five times since April last year. So I did some like electroconvulsive therapy and yeah, because there were times where, you know, I felt very, um, I don't know, I just wanted to end my life. Yeah, just, I, I think it's all the, the trauma really building up in me. And I was just very desperate to end my pain. Like, yeah, I've been so burnt out, you know, from all the, the struggles that I've been through. Yeah, actually, it's just building up and collecting even until today. <sighs> yeah, so I actually read that book. Um, last year in October and then I, I left it in the ward so I just hope someone else can also read it yeah well I, I'm still stuck with what you just said there I just, mm. just want to know that like I'm really impacted by yeah like I'm trying to imagine what that must have been like for you how scary that must have mm -hmm. been to be in that place and actually for me it's okay you know I love it <laughs> in fact I feel it's it's I can understand why now um, that a lot of people who go to prison or uh, are also in these wards are also like uh, um, uh, they, they kind of like it's difficult for them to kind of break out of that system of let's say unemployment or poverty because it is addictive as well, you know, for people to take care of your meals, for people, you, you don't have to do anything, you know, you just follow the activity schedule. Yeah, Whereas for me now, now that I'm here, I, I, I have to do everything myself. It's really stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand where we got mis misinterpreted there. Like I, I see how you can enjoy being in there. <laughs> Thinking yeah. about how it was just before you did, like what, like how, how that must have been a very dark uh, period when all those things accumulate that would make you want to, you know, like, to reach uh, out. I think I'm used to the darkness. Yeah, to be honest. It's Tell difficult, us. even Tell even today, even now. Yeah, it's tough. I think it's um, uh, cognitively, um, maybe a certain path of thinking. I do have rather uh, black and white thinking as well. Yeah, so um, that is rather unhelpful. Um, I think sitting down with a therapist or also doing... Uh, worksheets you know where, where you kind of analyze your pattern of thinking would kind of tease um, these um, illogical thinking styles out yeah so sometimes it's like you jump to conclusions or sometimes it's like you know you, you would assume that oh maybe people are, are don't care about me you know just because yeah just because you you have that um negative loop like playing over and over yeah, so some so um because you, you can't see you can't see you know your own mind. So it does help to, to talk things out with, with people. That's why like you know group therapy helps, that's why um uh, some journaling also helps as well if you're on your own. I, I find that you know when you have a lot of thoughts, sometimes just writing all your thoughts out, you know, unfiltered would would help. Or sometimes just reading instead of focusing on your mind, you you focus on on like like that book is a great one, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, just, because we we do have blind spots, a lot of blind spots. 
Yeah, yeah so we good. do, we need um, um, different perspectives uh, to, to um, how to say, yeah, like offer um, like a balance because, because um, our, our thinking is really influenced by, you know, our, our upbringing and also the current environment we're in and, and, the, and the information we consume. So, yeah. It's important yeah. to, to for for people for others to, to examine it as well and to and to see you know what certain parts become unhealthy, yeah. Mm. Yeah, wow. Uh, so many so many golden nuggets there. Um, yeah, there's like uh, you know I can speak personally about myself over the years and uh, and what I see in my therapy room these days is just this isolated thinking where we kind of don't let anybody in and we kind of like a ping pong machine it mm. rotate sort of um, <laughs> destructive thoughts sometimes or depressive thoughts or self-critical thoughts mm. or self-loathing or whatever it is that's um, generally of the of a negative tendency uh, and it's lovely to allow someone in to be able to give some feedback and then uh, for you to move out of the thoughts and into the feelings sometimes and really help to shape how we think and how we feel. But there was something again that you said that really jumped out to me. Uh, and that's just again how these thoughts can um, build up and can, and in a way are the darkness in a way that, that, that can, can pull the, can narrow the vision and, and can mm. really debilitate us and um, I think for anybody watching out uh, any of our viewers that you know we all we, we all get stuck sometimes we all have struggles we all can think negatively and it's super important to to know that you're not alone with it and it's really helpful to reach out to uh, call a friend who is able to listen and not need to alter you but just listen yes, and yeah with you like if you have a friend like that just they're gold you know because it's and if you can't find them, then reach reach for some professional support it's like so important and and during this time like like how was your family with finding you you know like hearing it but were they supportive later on in your life were they able to understand what was going on could they relate with it or, or were they still confused by it um, actually, family-wise, I've they they they're not really like involved in my life, to be honest. Yeah, that's one aspect which I always feel like my family doesn't get me. Yeah, at all. <laughs> it's a bit sad. So yeah, kind of like they're just biologically related. Mm, that's all I would say. Like they don't really have very developed um e emotional quotient. Yeah, so they, they don't really know about anything. Mm. <laughs> they, they wouldn't be able to have such a conversation with you. They're very different from me. Yeah, they, 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 they don't know what is psychology. Yeah, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's like a wall. Like, yeah. Because um, I, I think most Singaporeans, they, they have very different kind of mentality. They're very concerned about money, uh, image, like face, as in like um, um, just totally not <laughs> Ubud style. Yeah, um, it, it it's just very different, like profit, like um, um, uh, I don't know, just very yeah. like even thinking about it, my EQ has like IQ has just like fallen by like <laughs> 20, 30 points. I, I don't know, just just lowers my vibe yeah just very like mundane things yeah yeah good people mm. <laughs> it's, uh, disconnect uh, from yeah it's just, just very disconnected from like um um their heart yeah just they just there is a huge disconnect from heart and soul in here there's a spiritual poverty here yeah, I mean, even pe even though people you know attend church, this um, you, you know they they so called have a religion is all organized religion. They don't truly uh, so called like uphold uh, 
values, their own values. They just kind of blindly follow things. Yeah, that's that's the kind of culture here. People blindly follow things because uh, oh, it's the rule. They just follow. You know, they they don't have a mind of their own. Yeah, and they're very very. It's just cut off from like the essence of life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and again, you know, the, it was echoed in the last podcast, and it's I think throughout the world and in different, um, although it's very predominant in Southeast Asia, but it's all over the world uh, that behaviors can be confused when they're really trauma responses to mm-hmm. uh, environments and ancestrally, uh, generationally handed on, uh, sort of. Traumas where you learn to shut down because it's not safe to be free. It's not safe to have a voice. It's not safe to speak out, uh, and it's better to be uh, to conform. Uh, so mm. these things are all over the world. And then generations later, uh, the it's, it's sometimes our work to to help find a way through to do the healing. Uh, mm. for, and also that, also that haunting that, that that comes in. So yeah, I can really feel what that must be like. That, you know, oh, it's extremely tough. Yeah, you know when I give compliments, like people don't believe me. They're like, oh, oh, you must be like lying and like, huh, that kind of thing. So it's like, oh, it's like, I, I, mm-hmm. yeah, or like there'll always be people like trying to bring you down, trying to like tear you down apart. Yeah, they just enjoy. They enjoy it. They enjoy that um, hurting you. Yeah, that's the culture here because from a young age we're br- we're brought up to be competitive because um, yeah, uh, and 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 like philanthropy and like uh, giving is 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 not um something that people really do here because um you know want want the money for yourself so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and just like sale yeah. free. It's like oh, everybody rushes. You know, they want free things, and they are very entitled. Yeah, culture here is like that. It's just like spoon fed or entitlement or like push others away to get to get my spot kind of stuff. Yeah, just this guilty and hearted. Oh my god! Like when I think about this, I'm just like oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you used a uh, a word that I. Uh, that I really enjoyed. You said spiritual poverty, but as I hear you talking, it feels. Like- I'm still dealing with this every day. I mean, I have to go to work. You know, I deal with these people at home. I deal with this kind of thing every day. People giving me attitude. Oh my god! It just continues making me depressed. I don't know how to get out of this except to die. I have to just keep carrying on with this. Unfortunately. Yeah, I don't. I, I just have to keep finding that strength within me, that wellspring through of my soul. Yeah. Yeah, mm, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. The environment is not responsive, and it's not reliable, and it's not safe to be vulnerable. Then it's it's yeah. essential that um, like if there was a word more important than essential, I can't think of it right now. But for one to really hunt out support. And if they can't get it mm. in their base, and, and when the when the culture is is let's say a little bit toxic like this, then it's so important that you get it therapeutically. That there's at least some place that you can go as a place to be vulnerable, to be real, to be honest, to be open. Until slowly you can start to create that in your in your world. Or if it's really hard, then you find another place to eventually move to. But that just seems. Yeah. Like, challenging for you and I'm curious about what are the the things that you do uh, on a on a daily basis or on a weekly basis mm. that helps you come back to your heart helps you lift your spirits helps you you know be able to get charged up in a way that helps you go back into this ordinary disconnected world sometimes and what you do to to come back home to yourself yeah so like I think sleep is important like um a lot of people are sleep deprived so that messes up with the, the body system, the brain. Um, then uh, eating nutritious food, I think that's important. Yeah, it's like going for nutrient, nutrient-rich food. Um, yoga classes, that's very important for me. At least like one, two 
I need I need to like squeeze that in <laughs> to my schedule. Yeah, because a lot of people are like, oh, you're a yoga teacher, blah, blah, blah. But teaching is ex is totally different from, from you as a student attending the class. It's, it's just totally different, right? It's like you being a massage therapist versus receiving a massage. It's just different. It's different. Yeah. And people say to me as well, <laughs> I used to give massage therapists. That's what I started off doing in this so many years ago. And uh, wow, it's like you need, I just, I needed to have a massage after every four massages I give. I needed to get a massage, and, and oh, exactly, I, yeah. That self care mm. the therapist now. I think I'm in therapy a lot because I work a lot with people. It's just so important that you get the support in whatever way you can get it, and whether it's mm. all you know, sort of centering, breathing, connecting, finding your direction with the yoga, the mindfulness. I can see how that can really help you be with yourself a little bit more. And do you still write these days? Do you still journal uh, or have a diary? Uh, not, not so, not so much. I, I don't, I don't, I haven't been doing that um, enough, which I think it's, um, which I should, but I think uh, what I've done instead is to, is just like chatting with some like-minded friends who, you know, are into like uh, psychology and uh, like personal development. Yeah. So I kind of channel like my thoughts, um, into those conversations, yeah. So it's like some to bounce back and forth. Like, it's, oh, it's really, really important yeah. to have. You know, you know, books are great, but they don't talk back to you. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Um, uh, mm. well, and uh, so, as you are at this stage, how is this body image issues? How is you know? Although we kind of we covered the sort of eating disorder, tell mm. us. How that, how you started to notice that was an issue. Otherwise, it is so linked. Uh, and how is it today? Well, I think today, um, especially for this year, I haven't been like you know actively binging and purging, which I have been for the past years, um, which is a great step. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because that's I mean bulimia is my main um, issue. You know, like like eating huge amounts of food and then self induced vomiting to get rid of um, um, the, the food. But I mean, if you just look at it from a physical point of view, view, people would be like, oh, you know what? Just don't eat so much. Or you know, just exercise it off. But looking beyond that, it is spiritually someone who is starving for love and, and, and or like getting rid of guilt and or like relieving oneself of like um, pent up emotion and stress. Yeah. It, it, it is not simply just, uh, oh, why don't you just eat less? Or why don't you just exercise the food off? It's not that. It is truly um, a psychological um, um, illness. It, it, it is an emotional beckoning, you know, for, for one to, to love oneself more. Yeah, and, and, and all those like unhealthy mental attitudes around food, around exercise, around one's um, um, body. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a sign. It's a message that, you know, that we, yeah, we, we need to, we need to give ourselves more attention and, and um, yeah, and to be like my cat, you see, like to, to like, like to really like pay attention a bit more into and to you know maybe be less in the world because i realized something when i travel i don't have such body image issues as much yeah when i travel i i really you know just enjoy myself in the country i don't really like focus so much on like how i look and all that it's, it's kind of a different mindset that's why i traveled so much in the past yeah it's mm. uh, it's uh i think it's uh, a great distraction because there's lots of other things that can catch your eye. And, yeah, uh, but at the same time, it's it's the environment. Like you know, in Singapore, people judge you by your body. People, especially Asians, the first thing when 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 uh, uncles, aunties, Chinese New Year, or when they visit you, they be like, "Oh, you gain weight. Oh, you lost weight. Oh, they just they just they like to comment about your body. Your body is up for." Um, Com yeah, up for discussion 
Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's really difficult, yeah, especially like celebrations. And then yeah. um, um, we use food as a way to, to like, um, as love. It's like, oh, I cooked, you, I cooked this for you, you know. So it's like, you must eat it. If not, it's like you're rejecting my love. Yeah, so it's difficult. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, it's not just Southeast Asia. That's not just Singapore. You know, like that's a common Yeah, thing. it's like yeah. everywhere, actually. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, people, you know, we, sometimes we, again, I think we all just need to learn new ways to be with one another other than uh, what you're describing as a projection, their own insecurities onto you and saying, hey, you know, you, you're the wrong weight or you're not too skinny or, or whatever it is. It's just there's no sensitivity there because they, they haven't um, realized what the struggle is within themselves sometimes. But yeah, it's really hard. And so wow and if you know like and you at this stage in your life right now you have a, a group of friends that uh you connect with that's supportive no actually I, I just connect like um maybe like i just chat like one-on-one -on -one with people yeah and people just come and go in my life to be honest mm. i'm i'm really quite lonely yeah i i find it difficult to to like have long-term relationships or like to really connect with people like I don't know <laughs> yeah and that takes time you know and I think you're on the mm -hmm. right to you know because it's like it's when we don't have that as children and I think this is for anybody listening I hear sometimes where we don't have friends or we tend to withdraw or isolate a lot of our worlds it's also um, a reflection of, of our childhood. Often that's what we did to survive the childhood. Often that's all that was available. There was no second. Hey, like, how's your heart today? Like, how's your mind? Like, 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 tell, it's, I, I'm noticing you're sad. It's, it's okay to be sad. Let me be here with you in your sadness. There wasn't that interest often. So it's very, and then it takes work to really mm -hmm. be, to be able to know what to do with someone sometimes, to be able to be yeah. able to with them. Often we try too hard and then we're exhausted. And we'd rather be isolated because it's, it's not as difficult. Or we meet conflict and we get hurt and then we go and isolate because it's too painful. So there's, there's all these life struggles that if you keep on this trajectory, I, I'm, as, you, as you get more company with your therapist and, and you start to understand your own mind more it's, it's very possible to to birth that and the loneliness you know it, it needs to be found mm. it, needs to, it needs to be accompanied by it by a, a time when you're when we're all ready to do that and that's what i see that's that shifts that because i see that so often clients being able to be very isolated and the, and, the, and the journey, and, and for myself also, the, what it takes to be able to move in, to be able to commune with people, to connect with people, to be able to know what to do with them, you know, and yeah. it, takes time. it just takes time. Mm. And you know, like, what's, what's your plans uh, in relation to, you know, um, being in Singapore, or is there a way, what would be a dream for you um, in, to do in the world, what would be something? Because you're so skilled, you're you're in the uh, sort of acting, modeling, the yoga world, and then you're also like a mindfulness teacher, and you work with kids. Like, what would the what would the future look like if you could paint it? Mm, to be honest, um, I really don't know because I'm very exhausted <laughs> from just like working or. Because when, when, yeah, I'm just, I mean, even though I'm, I'm very happy, like, doing all the things I've been doing for the past 10 years working, um, I guess I'm someone who's always gone after, like, what I've wanted. Yeah, I, I, I'm a go-getter. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like, wh which countries I want to travel to, what jobs I want, I go for it. So, it reduces, I, I don't want to, like, regret things. So, I try my best. Yeah. So, um, so I, can understand I think people. for me, I'm exhausted. So, yeah, I, I just want to yes. like, 
sleep more and just be with my cats, which is what I do actually. I just lie in my bed and just. Well, some parts of the world, yeah. that's, that's therapy, right? There. Just, uh, yeah. Big heap teaspoonfuls of oxy, you know, tosin from the cat and uh, and rest time feels feels good for the body. And yeah. I have, you know, I just want to, before we come to the yeah. end. Yeah, because I, um, yeah, I, I think like balance, because I, I don't want to like burn myself up more, uh, even though I do have a lot of talent. People take advantage of my talent. They, they know that I'm passionate. They know I'm talent, talented. So I get requests every day about this, about that. So, um, I, and they take advantage of my kind heartedness. People know it. So they, they just do that all the time. So um, I'm very burnt out. Yeah, I, I have to be uh, more discerning um, in terms of what I uh, choose and who I want to work with. That's yeah. Very but I would um, prioritize my health, especially my rest and my mental health above everything else. Yeah, my, my alone time. Yeah, like prioritizing like, you know, yoga, yeah, I think at, at the at the end of it, you know, um, I have to be okay with my days. You know, I I mean, we all want like a certain goal and all that, but if you think of it, we are being in the present moment right now, so we are living our days, and then we have to be okay with it. Like right now, I'm 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 so happy to be on this um, podcast with you to uh, this. You know, seeing you live, talking about what I'm so passionate about. Yeah, I'm doing things I love every single day of my life. Yeah, so yeah, I, I know what I love. I think that's important. Like, you know what you want. Um, and I set intentions. I think that's an important thing that I do. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I, before I go for yoga class, before I do certain meditation, I have my intention for the practice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you a question and mm. you just, just answered the question before I asked it. And I think it's lovely that you can demonstrate that how things are not perfect and how sometimes you're still bombarded or you have struggles. The environment is not perfect where you're living. And sometimes the environment in your mind is, 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 is challenged. But these techniques that you employ uh, to help you find balance in the world and to to be able to be more loving, to be focused on the things that you're passionate about, to be able to learn discernment more, practice saying no, um, and, and, and getting help with that, learning to resource yourself in new ways. These are the things, you know, for the listeners out there, yeah. I mean, every one of us, we struggle and we have challenges. And it's important to find the supports and then to orientate ourselves in the world, whether it's having a sort of uh, goals or, in, or sort of incentives, things that we want to uh, achieve, but then also to be able to get the support in, in, in some way and, and have rest. And, you know, if there's not a lot of physical support, then a big fluffy cat sometimes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I just would like in your own words, what would be something for someone who's struggling with eating disorders or dealing with body image issues, what would be something you could say to them uh, that can be helpful in, in directing them or, or just anything that comes to mind? Like, what would be something that you didn't get told to you at a time that you think could mm -hmm. be helpful? Yeah, as you say that, I'm, I'm imagining like those difficult points in my in my past like those moments where you know i really hated my my body yeah mm. well i would say that you know keep working on yourself um yeah it will be di it is difficult right now and um it will be a difficult journey towards self love yeah, to, to what's really embracing your, your body as it is, because, you know, your body is this physical suit, which your soul, um, your spirit lives in through your existence for this life. Yeah, so you have to work with it, no matter what. You have to, to embrace 
you have to embrace it and yeah and and focus on on health focus on health rather than than its looks yeah because i mean uh, for men body image is huge as well you know i i know so many men they in my industry especially they all take steroids yeah it's very normal they they lots of protein shakes and and um, over gymming comparison yeah i get sh- yeah um, uh, inject injections and i don't know everything yeah just yeah a lot of a lot of these yeah, just get like the body they want <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. mm. yeah and and i i mean like i'm rather passionate about like men's like mental health as well because like uh in terms of suicide it's like 60 like two thirds of suicides are men, you know. Like so many men, I mean, when I talk to them, they are like really repressed. They they feel that they don't have um, anyone they can talk to about their feelings. Yeah, because men, you have to be stoic, right? You have you cannot like sh- cry. You cannot like show your so called weak side. So it's it's very it, it's stifling. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's difficult for for women and it's difficult for men to learn to be vulnerable and authentic, and uh, to be seen being vulnerable and authentic, and um, and to learn the relief that can come when you can allow yourself to be held. And um, yeah, and this problem with body image, you know, because I work within the industry. Uh, bigorexia is a, a huge thing I work with my clients, which, which is uh, the, uh, the sort of need to be really large and what they see is only them being small. So it's this very confused state. Uh, and women have it on the other flip side where they think they're big, uh, but yet they can't see that they're real size sometimes. So yeah. all these... Uh, different things that, that, that really challenge the mental states. Um, we're going to have some future podcasts specific, like really specializing in, in different areas within the, the fitness industry. Um, but I'm so moved by your honesty today and your ability to, to just be a ray of light in the midst of the imperfect land uh, imperfect environment where the lacks support and so on many levels culturally in my opinion is heavily trauma <laughs> that that can't or don't don't know how to be sometimes in their hearts or to be able to be with be, be to be in, in in deeper connection i know i've been there i've been in a lot of asian countries sometimes this is the case and and how you're shining in, in your own way through it, and some days I'm sure you don't feel like that 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 you shine, and then how you've learned to take care of yourself, and and still days when you don't get it right, and when you do feel bombarded, and just to come here and to be able to be open and real to women who are suffering in the same way, or or they can identify with some aspect of this, uh, it's really an honor, and I I think it's really important for men and women to speak out. And to be honest, and uh, the, that's the medicine right there. Like what it takes to be honest. And thank you for being an ambassador of that on our show tonight. And uh, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm so honored to be on your show as well. Ooh! Yeah, I'm. I'm really, really happy to like share about this today. So, yeah, yeah. You, you've done so much for me and for like everyone else you've touched. Yeah, very much. We're just planting some seeds here, you know. On the forest. <laughs> forest, yeah, yeah. yeah. And just <laughs> just before we get started, you know, um, you know, this hand was was running just from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was coming from like a shoot, yeah, like a film. Totally yeah. uh, on point, uh, but in, in in the busyness that she made it and. I yeah, I, 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 mm-hmm. I have to. I have to. Woo! <laughs> get you get it done. Um, mm. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a real honor. Thank you, son. And and uh, I wish you take the same now position as your cat and rest. 
and thank you for <laughs> your day to be with us. So thank you, everybody. Yes. Mm, om Shanti 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 Om. <laughs> Wow, everybody. So again, if anybody's listening who is either struggling with uh, body image issues, uh, sort of eating disorders, or you know somebody who's struggling, you know, like, please reach out to us or reach out to, to get support because it's not easy in there. But there's a way that you can find uh, help and relief and, and understanding. Um, so yeah, we, we can't do this by ourselves, this, this thing called life. Um, so, and again, everybody, for those who are feeling a bit stiff in your chair, who feel like you need to limber up a little bit, just reach out and uh, hit the like button, uh, share button and, so, and the subscribe button, if that's the case. And, you know, because it really helps us and it improves our algorithms and it helps reach more people. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in and, be well, be safe, and stay connected. Thank you.